<laughs> Hi, sorry, welcome to Safe to Ask. My name is Emily and I'm a fam leader. I'm V and I'm one of the safe leaders. And I'm Alicia and I'm one of the members of the LGBT community. Woo! So, um, last week, just a quick intro, last week, or maybe two weeks ago, I sent out an email saying if you have any questions regarding LGBTQIA+, um, just post them on the FAM anonymous Tumblr page and we would answer them. So here we are, ready to answer your questions. So jumping right in. Question number one. Hey fam, since coming to Macrob, I have noticed a fair bit of homophobia from people around the school and even some of my close friends. This can be quite harmful to students who are closeted and perhaps too scared to come out due to all the negative opinions surrounding the topic. Do you guys know any way to deal with homophobia and all the stigma around it? Okay, the best thing to do is to stand up and speak out about it. Even like a casual, hey, you shouldn't say something like that is a good way to get them to start thinking about, hey, why shouldn't I use this? Because a lot of the time, your friends probably just don't realize that they're being homophobic or transphobic. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Like Every now and again, I say to my friends, like, don't use that word. So yeah. even something casual like that gets people yeah. um, thinking and just raises a bit more yeah. awareness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you want to have an answer on the spot, it's because when you use the word, for example, hey, that's so gay, as an insult, you're basically saying that gay people are insulting. Mm. That they're gross mm. and their existence it's, is an offense. Yeah, it's like, I mean, like, it's like when people say, oh, you're such a girl, if you throw like a girl, I mean, like, how do you feel about that? Yeah. Because, uh, what does that even mean, yeah, you throw like a girl? Exactly, like, it's <laughs> saying that girls can't throw. Uh, excuse me. So, like, Watch me throw. Yeah. <laughs> Question number two Any tips on coming out to people? <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have to be a big thing. You don't have to sit them down and be really solemn and just seriously say I'm gay you know you can just be like what's up guys pretty gay today yeah <laughs> and gay today. I mean like it's really nice to have a group uh, like a close group of friends to like help you because I mean like a lot of people don't even know that they um that they should come out you know what I mean like people like for me it took me a really long time before I realized oh Maybe I feel like, or maybe I should come out, but like you don't even need to come out, you know what I mean? Like, because then when I started questioning my sexuality, I just started talking to my friends and being like, hey, I'm really confused about this, what do you think? And it became a thing where they were with me along the whole journey of me like coming out. And like even now, I haven't even told my parents, but that's because I don't feel like I should. Like, I didn't tell them that I was straight, they just assumed I was straight. So, you know, they can assume that I'm not straight either, I don't know, but like, you know, yeah. You don't have to come out ever, honestly. Let's think about it. Straight people or six, sex, um, six gender people never have to come out. They never have to be like, oh yeah, I'm straight or oh yeah, I'm cis. So why should you have to be like, oh yeah, I'm gay or oh yeah, I'm trans? Yeah, I mean like as long as you are comfortable with who you are and like you don't have to feel like you have to tell people and like kind of, um, what's the word, like uh, kind of... Um, <laughs> ah, it's like um, kind of uh. ah. <laughs> While Alicia thinks, um, V, do you wanna just define what cis means? Because some people might. Oh, know. okay. Cis means comfortable in self, which means the when you were born, the gender that people thought you were is the gender you identify as. For example, if you were born with female genitalia and the doctor's like, yeah, that's a girl, and you still identify as a girl, that means you're cis. However, if you were born with female genitalia and you identify as something else rather than a girl, then you're trans. Okay, and now I just realized, yes. So, you don't have to come out if you feel like coming out only to prove that you are... Okay, I lost it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to prove that you are part of the LGBT. Yes! Community. Like, you don't have to, like... I, it's really sad to think that I had to do this, but... When I came out as bi, I had to tell people that I had a girlfriend to prove people that I was bi because then the whole biphobia that people don't think you're bi is yeah, not real. Like you either have to be straight or gay. Yeah. There's no between. Exactly. Which is a lie because gen like gender, sexuality is extremely fluid and one day you can go from life in boys more and the next day you can be like, hey, girls are pretty hot. Yeah. Next question. 
Not a question. Oh, not a question. But just wanted to say that I found a girlfriend at Macrob and she's super cute and I love her so much. Hey. Yes! Good job. I mean, yeah. Go you. Hope, you're, yeah. hope you guys stay happy. Any tips on binding, especially if you're a broke student and your parents can't know? Okay, so I was just gonna say it now. You should probably always bind with a proper binder. But if you're really broke, like I was a couple years ago, two spot bars works really well. So you wear one normally and you wear one backwards over it so it constricts your chest. However, you shouldn't wear it for more than around eight hours because then your chest will start getting really sore. And you should never use tape, like ever, because it will constrict your chest and it will cause breathing problems for you. Awesome. Oh, you want to mention how they can't get one, contact me. Oh, yeah. If you can't get one, email me. It will be somewhere in the description, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Read the description box. Oh my god, we're such YouTubers. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> click subscribe, guys. Yeah, click, click subscribe, subscribe while you're like at this it. this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ali. Question five, what happens during safe meetings? Um, <laughs> on Mondays, we usually talk about things that happen within the LGBT community or history or things we found. And on Thursdays, we kind of just sit around and chill. Yeah, safe place. Get it to safe. <laughs> safe place. <laughs> Next question, which is actually a few questions, so I'll just break them up. Um, first part, how do you feel when people make homophobic or transphobic remarks at school? Like not directed at anyone, just a casual remark to their friends. It's pretty sad. It's pretty sad because once again, when you use these homophobic remarks, like I feel really un even as someone who can use it, I feel really uncomfortable <laughs> using the word fag or faggot just because of the negative connotations that it carries towards gay people and people within the LGBT community. So even if you're just using it to refer to your friends who aren't gay and you're not gay yourself, you should probably choose another word because if someone who is part of the community happens to be passing by and just hears it, it can make them feel really shit for the rest of a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Next part, do you think society is becoming too politically correct as it has come to the point that when you cannot assume a person's gender anymore? I'm not even sure what too politically correct means. Like, mm -hmm. how can you be too aware of societal issues? Um, it's like the it's like saying, is it too politically correct assuming that women don't want to cook or don't know how to cook? Like, it's just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the other part of the question? <laughs> <laughs> um, that it has come to the point where you cannot assume a person's gender anymore. Is that all you yeah. um, on? Okay, it might be a bit biased because I am trans and I feel terrible when people call me a girl or refer to me using she, her pronouns. Um, but I think you should always be aware of these issues because you don't know what other people have going on. And you should try to be as polite as you can to these people that you don't know. Yeah. Next part. Honestly, how open do you think Macrob is in regards to LGBTQA students? Pretty good. It's mostly because a lot of people who are homophobic or transphobic usually don't say anything about it. So being yourself is pretty good. You won't get attacked for it in this school, which can happen in other schools. Yeah, um, Macrob's pretty good. Like, there's so many people who are understanding, especially with today. I feel like society has changed a lot um, for the better. Especially in here, like that's why I felt so safe to come out, like at the start of this year, because I was confident about myself and also I was confident to tell everyone because I knew that there were a lot of people here who were could be um, open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, next question: Do you think it's possible to be trans without dysphoria? Yeah. Yes. I feel like the idea that you can't be trans without being dysphoria comes from societal's homophobic nature. And transphobic sure. yeah. And transphobic yeah. nature, yeah. sorry, yeah. Um, it's because back in the day, being trans was considered an illness and that dysphoria was one of the symptoms. Well, now, we obviously know that being trans is not an illness and you don't treat being trans at all. It's just something that you are. And dysphoria doesn't make you trans, and you don't need dysphoria to be trans. Mm. Next question. 
Would you guys ever consider doing another day or week dedicated to LGBTQ? I thought the day last year where everyone had to wear a touch of purple was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. We are, we are so revved up for this. <laughs> it's coming. Yes. Um, question nine. What is your opinion on marriage equality debates which happen in classes? Do you think they're okay or are they harmful to LGBTQ plus people's mental health? Marriage equality shouldn't be a debate at all, honestly. And having them in class can be harmful because there are some people who don't believe in marriage equality. And that's basically saying that they don't see um, gay people as equals, that they're lesser and yeah. they can't have the same things. And like back when I thought I was straight, I had this whole idea that, you know, I'd love to grow up, get married. And I was so excited for that to happen in the future. But then when I realized that I was actually bi, I came to that like point where I was like, oh, there's a chance that I can't get married. And the thought of that really hurts because this whole time I believed that I could, but then if the possibility that I can't because of who I am, that's not something that I want to have to worry about, you know, especially at this time. Yeah. Next question. Hey guys, I'm pretty sure I'm asexual, but when I tell people that I've never had a crush in my life, or have never experienced sexual attraction. A lot of them tell me, a lot of them either don't believe me or just tell me that I haven't found the right guy. Sometimes I find this quite offensive as I feel like my sexuality is being invalidated. How do you think I should deal with this? Also, would you ever consider bringing in a guest speaker to talk about the less well known sexuality, such as Ace, Aero, Aero, etc.? I'll just clear things up now. Ace is asexual, meaning you don't feel sexual attraction. And this also comes on. A gradient so people can feel sexual attraction maybe to on different levels so maybe you feel a little bit of sexual attraction maybe you feel a lot maybe you feel none at all and that's what a being asexual is aromantic is basically the same as being asexual except for romantic feelings so you just don't have romantic feelings for people at all mm -hmm. and but you feel sexual but yeah, um, yeah. you can um, keep in mind that romantic and attraction and sexual attraction are different things. So you can be sexually attracted to yeah. maybe like dudes and girls, but you can only be romantically attracted to girls. And it depends like, and the way you define sexual attraction, romantic attraction can differ. Like I knew someone who thought that like sexual, sexual attraction to them wasn't just like sex, it was like holding hands can be something. And that's something that they yeah. can feel comfortable with um, some people and sometimes it's not. You know, I mean like you don't, they don't, exactly equal like sexual and romantic doesn't necessarily equal the same thing and um it can define it's defined differently with depending on each person yeah that's with a lot of sexuality as well yeah. but moving back to this question a good analogy to use when someone doesn't really understand why you don't feel any romantic or sexual attraction is you ask them if they've ever want to shove a tube of toothpaste up their ass <laughs> if they say no then you say exactly that's how you feel about romantic and sexual feelings <laughs> that's so great yeah good one use it oh <laughs> uh, uh, yeah and the speaker yes. yeah we are yes definitely thinking of stuff like that yeah <laughs> next question if someone identifies as female but is born a male are they allowed to go to a girl's school also which bathroom do trans people go to okay um let's define this gender and sex are two things. Sex is your, your genitalia and gender is a social construct. Social construct. So it can be whatever. Um, McGraw, for example, is a single sex school. So only people with female genitalia can come to the school. So someone who was DMAB, um, designated male at birth, would not be able to come to McGraw, unfortunately. Even if they identify yeah. as a female. A female yeah. And bathroom that trans people use, whichever one they want to use, they're there to pee, they're not going to attack. <laughs> um, and for all the trans students here who feel uncomfortable using the female toilets, the toilets near the, oh shoot, what was, how do you, the first aid? No, no, not the first aid, the, the stairs, the hall, um, who's the lady that helps you with your feelings? The counselors. No, the, the counselors. Near the counselor's office is a toilet where one of the counselors has very graciously moved the female sign off so no labels oh that's great oh, i didn't know that yeah next okay. 
Next question. Why is it that so many people get targeted and attacked on social media, example Tumblr, for asking questions to do with LGBTQIA? Sure, the questions may be ignorant and could be answered with a little bit of self-initiated research, but for some of us, this kind of thing is new. It makes it hard to, ta it makes it hard to ask and clarify things and discourages raising awareness, adding to the somewhat taboo of the subject. That's why I think it's safe to ask is awesome, by the way. It's mostly because, as you said, there are a lot of resources online that answer a lot of the pretty basic questions that people ask. It's mostly because, I think online, because there is no tone of voice, you can't really decipher if it's malicious or not. So that's why sometimes people may get overly defensive on, so online. And it's also because a lot of, I know a lot of people within the community who have been questioning these things their entire life and for them to, for people to ask them questions makes them uncomfortable. And also that just because someone is part of the community doesn't mean that they are your dictionary for all of your questions regarding the community. Because you are straight, right? Do you know everything relating to straight people? Just asking. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. On. Question 13. I feel like I'll get bashed for asking. You won't. Um, even if it's out of genuine curiosity and because I'm confused myself. I don't want to hurt anyone for asking this. But what if it is just a phase? What if we're all getting caught up in the trend? I know you can't judge these things for others and it's what makes people happy that counts. But is there that possibility? Thanks. Sorry for my ignorance. But how will we know unless we never ask, right? Correct. Um, being trans and being just not straight has been around for years. Yeah. The only reason why it seems like a phase is because it's safer for people to come out. So it seems like there's a surge in the numbers of people within the LGBT community. Um, so am I just going to add something? Just My sister did gender studies, a uh, semester of gender studies this year at uni. Um, she was talking to me and told me a lot of interesting things. Homophobia has been around since ancient times. Like the ancient Greeks, their gods, which who they worshipped, um, were involved in a lot of homosexual acts and they were still worshipped. And in um, yeah, ancient Greek society, it was really normal for boys who hadn't come of age to engage in homosexual acts. And that wasn't frowned upon or anything. Um, it wasn't until the Catholic Church started gaining power, I think, yeah. I might be wrong, um, that the stigma like and like it started being looked down upon um mm -hmm. so yeah it's not definitely not a trend definitely not a phase it's been around for ages anything to add okay next question um my friend uses they them pronouns but not everyone knows that they're trans so i don't know when to use them and i don't want to ask them about their pronouns again because they're kind of awkward about it i think i know it might be awkward for you to ask them about it again, but you should just to make sure that they're comfortable. Um, I have a couple of friends who aren't particularly out, but they still prefer using their they them pronouns even if the other people don't know about it. And the thing is, if you do switch pronouns because it's from she her to they them, or he he him to they them, it's not really noticeable because. At first, people will think it's, hey, it's the plural pronoun, why are they using that? But they won't really question it further than that, so it would still be pretty safe for you to use and, they, them pronouns. And I think it's okay if you make if you accidentally call them by the wrong pronoun, like not as like, on purpose, but like actually, you could just say, you can just apologize and be like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Like I've had that with somebody with um, my friend who recently came out and um, told people that they would prefer to be called them or they. And then a lot of my close friends were all wondering, oh, it's really hard and I sometimes call them her, she, or like call them by their, um, birth not, name. yeah, by birth, their birth name, not their preferred name. And I told them that it's okay to just apologize and tell them sorry, um, I didn't mean to like offend you or anything. And not that they would be offended, because they also understand, like my friend is perfectly fine with people, like they understand that there are people who would accidentally use the wrong pronouns and that's perfectly normal. It's a special normal part of like just coming out and like having everyone around you. And it's just the thought of you trying to use the pronouns and that's all that really counts. Yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. Question 17. 
I have a friend who is bisexual and I have a crush on her. However, she told me she hasn't come out to her parents and probably never will because they don't approve and will get a heart attack if they find out. Which means she probably won't have any relationships with the same sex. I really like her, but I don't know what to do. Help! Part 2. Hello, it's the person who has a crush on their bisexual friend again. No need to answer my question anymore. The problem has been somewhat resolved. Smiley face. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's been resolved yeah, in a really good way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next question. Is it okay for me to say queer if I'm not LGBT? Hmm. Probably not. Because although it is the best, the shortest umbrella term for the LGBT plus community, a lot of people within that community don't feel comfortable using mm. that word because of the negative connotations that it carries towards mm. them. Honestly, though, I find that I I usually use it for myself, though. Yeah. And there are some people who would be comfortable, but like, don't assume that everyone mm. is. And make sure that if you do like use the word queer to describe someone, make sure that they are oh, okay with it. Don't just assume that they are okay. automatically. Hey guys, I feel really silly asking this, don't be, don't feel silly, but I've been thinking about my sexuality and I'm not sure that I'm straight, but I'm not sure that I'm bi or lesbian either. Do you know if there is, if there is a definite moment where you know your sexuality? First things first, you never have to label yourself, ever. Like even me, it's been around four or five years, I still don't have a label because I have no idea what I like. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like... You, I mean, like, you think about it, you can't really define yourself with just one word. I mean, like, who says, oh, I am just awesome, I'm nothing <laughs> else, I'm not smart, I'm not cool, I'm awesome. Like, nah, <laughs> that's, that's, not, it. <laughs> that's not how it works. Like, sexuality is fluid. Like, for me, I was struggling to figure out whether I was straight or whether I was gay, whether I liked girls more, whether I liked guys more. Then I was like, oh, wait, there's an in-between, and that's what I am. But like there are times where you could like someone more, like someone less, or you feel like, you know, the the way you feel changes every day, mm -hmm. and that's perfectly okay as long as you are confident with who you are and accept that I love yourself. Then yeah, that's all that matters. You know? As well as um, you can have your own personal meaning for these words. I know some people see bisexual as oh attracted to two genders, but I know other people who see bisexual as attracted to genders. The same as yours and to other genders yeah cool. last question hey fam i'm christian so is my bisexual friend how do i show support without going against my faith how does a christian who's also gay such bi such les deal with it let's think about it the bible tells you a lot of things it's actually against your faith to eat shrimp <laughs> so really? or to wear clothing of mixed um, materials so that polyester cotton thing you're wearing to school every day, that's a no-no in the Christian Bible. And that just means sometimes the Bible isn't wholly accurate because the Bible was written by man, not by God himself. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, I'm not Christian. I did go to Christian school for like eight years. But <laughs> they went to the same, same school. One. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I had internalized homophobia. It wasn't fun for anyone. Yeah. Um, but it's mostly for you to figure out where you stand on it and how your faith comes into it. And you can be part of the LGBT plus community as well as be Christian. There isn't you're either gay or you're Christian, you know? That's not how it works. You can be both. Awesome. Well, that's it. I hope we did the questions justice. If you have any questions, comment below oh. or at, ask on the Tumblr page. Um, the Tumblr page is probably yes. a bit more and anonymous. Um, yeah, anonymous and, we'll and or like message yes. us. Like we're yeah. I am. I, I don't know about you, yeah. but I am Open. all up in. You can just Facebook message yeah. me. Find my number from someone. Just, <laughs> I'm all, number. <laughs> you know, yeah. shout from across the corridor. <laughs> Yeah. I'm all ears. Yeah. Probably gonna be in the description. Yeah, everything's uh, in the description box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be there. Shoot me a message anytime. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and watch out in the future. Safe will probably be holding a question and answer thing, maybe sometime soon. Yeah. And no judgment. Just come in and ask stuff. Yeah. We'll be there. Don't be afraid. We don't bite. Love you guys. Sometimes. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>